Hello, I'm Lindsay Southern. I'm Assistant Librarian for Northern Devon Healthcare Trust. And this afternoon I'm speaking to Liz Jordan from Health Education England. Um, if you could just introduce yourself, Liz, and give us a bit of an insight into your role and your involvement with knowledge mobilisation. Hi, I'm Liz Jordan and I'm a knowledge specialist at Health Education England. Um, we're a fairly new team. We've been established since uh, December 2019. Um, and we provide the internal kind of library and knowledge service at Health, at Health Education England. OK, so what do, what difference does uh, knowledge management or knowledge mobilisation make to your organisation, do you think? Um, so knowledge management has a big part to play within our organisation. Um, I'd say first and foremost, it allows us to make um, evidence based decisions within the organisation. Um, and that in turn helps us to um, encourage innovation and best practice. Um, it also helps us manage our risks and our opportunities. Um, and I think it also has a good part to play um, in making HEE a good place to work because it encourages learning and sharing with each other across the organisation. Great. Oh, that's really interesting. So how did you get knowledge management established in your organisation? How have you managed to sustain that impact and the, keep it important in your role? So I think there are quite a few things that you can do. Um, we have kind of formal processes where we have like a knowledge management strategy, but I think my key advice to anyone would be to start small. And it's about those small little steps and those individual contacts that really make a big difference. Um, in terms of some of those things that I talked about in the previous question um, around the evidence based decision making, um, we provide a literature searching service and um, an evidence search service for people. And I think that's really great because it helps highlight to people within the organisation uh, the best practice um, and the latest research that's going on outside of the organisation. But we also add to that because we look at internally generated evidence as well. So things like lessons learned so we can add those two things together so that we make the best decisions possible. I think also um, to sustain the role, you have to create that kind of culture of sharing, which I talked about. So it's really important. And that culture helps to break down silos within the organisation. It helps people work together uh, and it encourages people to share things that they're working on. Um, we have a structure where teams are split across different regions. So sometimes teams can be working on the same things. So it's really important that we break down those barriers so that people work together. Um, and probably the last thing that I'd say is um, is about connecting people. So we do activities like the randomised coffee trials um, and we help to facilitate communities of practice. And both these things help connect people and enable that sharing culture. Oh, that's brilliant. It does sound like it's working really, really well. But is there anything that you've tried that hasn't worked out quite so well? And what do you think that's taught you for any future practice that you might do? Uh, so since we've moved to home working because of COVID, um, we've started facilitating some of our sessions online. Um, so kind of the lessons learned sessions or knowledge, harvest, knowledge harvesting sessions. And I think one of the things I've noticed is that actually it's much harder to facilitate um, knowledge sharing in an online environment. Um, not every participant has their camera switched on, so it can be difficult to pick up on things like body language um, and it can be hard to bring everyone into the group. So I think really the things that I've kind of learned from that um, are to try and make everyone feel as comfortable as possible, uh, to try and encourage people to switch on their cameras where they can. Um, I think one thing I've noticed as well is that it's OK sometimes to have a silence in online meetings. And although it might feel a bit uncomfortable, it's not uncomfortable. And if we were in a room, there would be time for reflection and there would be those little short pauses and silences. So that's OK. Um, and probably my last tip would be to make sure you have two facilitators for an online session. Um, it just makes it a bit easier in terms of managing the chat and also taking notes, because if you're trying to do all three things at once, that's quite hard. Um, so, yeah, definitely if you can have two facilitators and that makes your life a little bit easier. Brilliant. Oh, thank you so much for sharing what you've done so far and you know your knowledge journey and hopefully that will help other people as well. Thank you very much, Liz. Thanks. Thanks.